what I'd like to do is give you just a quick tour of where we are and where we're going. Because 2023 begins AZ Bio's third decade. That's right, we've survived 20 years. And that's thanks to all of you. Give yourselves a round of applause. So the AZ Bio Board of Directors in their strategic sessions looked at what that next decade needs to accomplish. And the vision is that Arizona will be a top 10 bioscience state. We're not there yet. We have a ways to go. But I'm going to give you a feel for where we are, where we're going, and how we're going to get there. So first of all, take a look at these numbers. The economic impact in 2021 was $38.54 billion. So starting from practically nothing 20 years ago to today, the bioscience and healthcare sector, and this does not include our hospitals, is one of the fastest growing and most significant highest wage sectors that we have in the state of Arizona. The other thing that's really significant is that the 2021 numbers don't show the real hiring impact that we are benefiting from when we look at um, expansions like Bristol-Myers Squibb and Exact Sciences that will be filling out their people requirements over the, the coming years. So when we come back and look at these numbers again, they're going to be higher again. And I want to do a shout out to my friend Michelle Oshman at the Biotechnology Innovation Organization in Washington, D.C., who is an Arizonan. That's right. But we won't hold that against you. Um, but she is also leads the advocacy and state government relations efforts at Bio and a lot of the support that we have received over the years is thanks to Michelle. And Michelle, thank you for flying out and being here. All right, so y'all know that I'm an economist, and so I can't talk to you without using numbers. But it's important to understand where we are, how far we have come in just three years. And they were three very difficult years. But as you look at the slides on either side of the room, you will see that in addition to that economic impact, we grew the number of firms from 2160 to 2912 in three years. So we are growing companies here in Arizona. Our employment jumped from 29.5 all the way up to 36.4. Our venture capital is an embarrassment. And we'll talk about that and how we fix that a little bit later. Um, and then you can also see where we are with NIH funding, academic R&D, et cetera. These are the inputs that create the outputs that ultimately create the outcomes for patients and the jobs for people. So these numbers are very, very important that we focus on them, that we understand them, and that we work together to grow them. Now, it's wonderful to look at your baseline and say, look how fast we grew. But we also have to recognize that everybody else has grown too. And so what you see on the screens is where we actually sit today. So that phenomenal economic impact, we are number 20 out of 52. And we are number 14th by population, so there is no excuse for being below 14. If you look at where we are for the number of companies, we are right at 14. Now, we want to get to number 10 or better, but we're at 14. We're there. 
Uh, but our employment numbers were number 22. And relative to venture capital, we're number 25. It's actually a really simple equation. If our exciting new life science companies that are spinning out of TGen, and spinning out of universities, and spinning out of the minds of the people in this room, if the high risk early stage capital is not there, those companies will not achieve the milestones that they need to achieve to attract larger investments from angels or venture capitalists. And if they don't do that, they will not have the money to invest in creating the life-saving the life saving changes and cures that people are waiting for. Now, I see some of my friends in this room who have been amazing supporters of the biosciences. And I'm not going to call them out by name, but they know who they are. They have supported TGen from its earliest inception. They've worked with our universities so that we can continue to build up the infrastructure that we need to drive the innovation. And they are the legislators who have given us the capital that is needed to build the foundation that the rest of us then can create on. Now, I am going to ask Bob Robson to stand up. So Bob Robson had an idea of what we needed to compete on national and global stage, and it was to build up our universities. Thanks to his leadership, we got the first $500 million that created the Biodesign Institute, the Bio5 Institute, research facilities in the, at the U of A, and more. That was what really got things started. But then we didn't have enough. And when I went back to Representative Robson and said, who was at the time was Speaker Pro Tem Robson, and said, Bob, we got a problem. We need more. And he worked with us for five years until we convinced the legislature and the governor that we needed more. And it was a billion dollars. And that was thanks to the leadership of Bob Robson. Please give him a big round of applause. As the, we look at you know, what's coming next, CAMI is going to be one of the big investments that we make on the Phoenix Bioscience Campus, or on the Bioscience Corps. And thanks to Governor Ducey's one-time investment of federal funds, um, $150 million is going into that project. But don't get too excited yet because they actually need another $150 million to complete the building and $200 million to put people in it. So we are getting started. We're not done yet. So one of the things that I shared earlier is not just where we are and where we want to go, but what does, it, what does it look like when we get there? And this is really important. What I've done for you here is I've actually given you what it looks like to be number 10 in the rankings in these categories. And I want you to focus on the fact that the states that are on this list are all the same size or slightly smaller than Arizona. So economic impact, remember I said we're at 38? So number 10 on the economic impact list is the state of Minnesota at $78.17 billion. So if we hit our goal of growing our industry on these metrics, the take back to the state of Arizona is substantial. When we look at the number of companies, right? Companies employ people. Your two big factors in driving economic impact are your wages and your employment. And companies, Colorado is number 10 for number of companies. Um, at 3359 to R2912, 
Now here's the interesting thing. Colorado now for over 10 years has been making investments into their early stage companies through their advanced manufacturing program. And we're seeing their growth because they were below us at one point. We're seeing how they are growing faster than we are. So we have to figure out how to take that position back and pass them. Jobs, Indiana is number 10 in jobs. Again, these are all states that are approximately the same size as Arizona. Um, Indiana benefits from a significant manufacturing ecosystem. And so as we look at working with our economic development partners, with our legislators, um, with our innovation partners, we need to be growing what we have here, but we need to be attracting at the same time. So support for organizations like the Arizona Commerce Authority and GPEC and Sun Quarter Inc. and others who are doing that work to tell Arizona's story in the various economic development circles is going to be continually important. And then venture capital. As I said earlier, if there's no money, there's no growth, period. And in this room right now, we have amazing early stage companies that could make a much bigger impact if we had the resources necessary to fuel that impact. They are working on addressing our home health and nursing shortage. They are helping babies that have, right now, more brain surgeries than birthdays before they're at the age of 18. They're working on new delivery systems for health care. They're working on trying to make it easier for our doctors to do their job because, quite frankly, if we keep discouraging our physicians and they keep leaving the marketplace, we've got a big problem. That's just a few of the companies that I'm looking at in this room right now and what they're doing. Some of the others are working on a vaccine that will prevent cancer from starting in the first place. Sorry, BMS, that would really hit your bottom line. But it would be something that we all celebrate. Because until we are able to take care of the patients that are waiting for the innovations that this industry can deliver, our job is not finished. Some of you have heard me talk about what inspired me to come to AZ Bio 12 years ago, and that was when my son got Crohn's disease. And it was life-changing for him. Thank goodness Jansen makes a medicine that has enabled him to live a normal life. But we still don't know what causes that disease, let alone how to prevent it. Those are the things that people in this room are working on. And we need to come together to help them. So how do we do that? Well, there are two things that happened last year that are really the path that we move forward on. The first is the Arizona Health Innovation Trust Fund. And that is an area where um, Tom Dorn and many members of the legislature got together, explained this problem. And the big question was, how are we going to build a major endowment Think, those of you in the industry, think what Arizona would look like if we had something like the Welcome Trust in Arizona. That would be a different world. And so as we move forward, as we continue to work towards that, we need to have the capital, the risky capital. So, this year, the Arizona legislature and Governor Ducey then signed into law the Arizona Health Innovation Trust. It is intended to start as a $200 million endowment that will then mature and fund early stage life science innovation 
It will work to create the internships and programs for our students so we have the workforce to support our growth. And it will support the entrepreneurs with education and support. But it has to mature for five years. So the sooner that we get the money into the fund, the sooner it matures and the sooner it has an impact. So for our legislative leaders, I'm giving you fair warning. We are going to be knocking on your door. We are at a point in the state's um, financial structure where we have, because of inflation, which none of us like, but it drives growth in the general fund. And there are hundreds of millions of dollars right now in the general fund in just the first four months of the year. Um, so this is a great time to get us started. The second part is AZ advances because if we have to wait five years for that endowment to mature, we need resources today to help with that. So I would encourage all of you to put in your phone azadvances.org because I need your help. When we go to the legislature and we ask for their help, the first thing they're going to do after they get up off the floor in shock is say, oh, but who's behind this? Every person that makes the, an, a donation to AZ Advances, and I'm not going to tell you how much that donation should be, you know what is right for you and your family or your company. But every donation, you then have the ability to say, I would like to be on the donor wall and send me a picture and you will join a growing list of Arizona leaders who are there. Some of the people in this room are there. And through that, that will give us the runway to do the early work to support the talent, to support the entrepreneurs, and hopefully as that grows, to make the mission-related investments that will take the next great idea that develops in Arizona and makes it real in Arizona and keeps it growing in Arizona and employs the people of Arizona and it solves the health challenges of our friends, our neighbors, and our family. So I would ask you to keep that in mind as you're working on your Christmas list or if your accountant says uh, you need another tax write-off by the end of the year, we've got one for you. <laughs>